So hi, welcome to the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Steven. And James of Rollover White. And we're asking some questions today about the new single, My Regards. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you so much uh, for saying that. It's It's been great, you know. Um, that one was was specifically was one that we were very eager and excited to get out because... I mean, personally, it's my favorite song that we have written, and I've been telling people that since the start. Um, but it was definitely a different vibe and a switch up from the songs that people were used to and the other ones that people have heard. Um, so it was really kind of a fresh new um, thing. And uh, I was just super excited that we got some good reception on it and people seem to be digging it so far. So I'm happy about that. Hell yeah. For sure. That. It bangs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. Appreciate that. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the single name or cover art? Um, I The single name uh, kind of just came with that lyric, you know, in the chorus, these are my regards, we fall apart. You know, um, the song really, it's a, it was, that was definitely one of the most personal songs from a writing standpoint, I would say, from these new collections of songs that are on this new album that is coming out very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a very therapeutic, uh, you know, sort of process writing that. And there was, there was a lot of things in that specifically, like me and Issa kind of wrote those parts together, um, our other singer, Issa. Um, but uh yeah, it was very um, reflective of like things that were going on at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when you listen to the lyrics, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, you know, kind of about a relationship where you love someone and but you're realizing that maybe they aren't good for you anymore. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you have to like, m make a tough decision and almost yeah. come to the terms that like, this isn't going to work. Like it's gone too far. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, but the single uh, art, James, I don't know. Do you? Uh, I basically, uh, I, the bass player in our band, Emmett had a girl who lives down the hall. Her name's Ella. And mm -hmm. I, we're at this point where we're like, ah, oh, dude, we got to just put this song out. Like it's, it's, it's way too long. And it's just, I went to Emmett and I said, all right, so your friend Ella, I'm going to put all my trust into her to, do what she wants and what she hears. And I think that's really cool when someone does something that comes from someplace that's real. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes. Like the first draft we got, I was like, yes, I'm so happy she's doing something that she wants to do. And it's not us telling her what she's hearing or whatever. Yeah. So I think it, it wasn't intentional. And I think with such a personal song coming with, like coming from such a real place, both lyrically and instrumentally, like that complements it so well, you know? Yeah, for sure. totally. Uh, you guys mentioned an album. Let's talk about that for a second. What can you tell us about it? And it's 10 yeah, songs. <laughs> 10 songs? Got... I mean, how long is it? Do you know the length, James? I, uh, without, I honestly like, don't know the length. <laughs> it's got to be a little over. It's got to be close to 35 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. I would say I 35 minutes. Yeah. It's probably but, longer. Um, yeah. It's it's been a process for sure trying to get this out. Um and some of these songs on the album like the first single that we released Dolly which came out back in November, we had written that back in 2019, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh and then it took 2 years to finally get it out. Um but you know the whole process of the album was amazing and it was a blast and we're very excited to for people to hear the whole collection we're still nailing down a specific date right now and just working on some of the art and sort of the promo aspects of that but um yeah definitely you follow all of our socials and stuff roll over white instagram facebook like you'll you'll see the updates of when that's coming for sure all right but exciting I'm stuff. excited for everyone to hear hell yeah <laughs> Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this track? Um, I it think... started with you. It started with you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Well, it's probably the, the oldest, like that intro, like line is probably the oldest thing that was floating around. Right. And this was predating our first EP. And all of us were like, yeah, that's great. But what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, okay. 
And we're not one of those bands that is going to like try and force a song out of something because if yeah. we're not feeling something, we're not going to, we're not going to put our best effort in. Yeah. yeah. We don't and finish it, it. We don't finish something if we're like all not in it. You know what I mean? Like we'll just, but this was, sorry to interrupt James, but this was definitely like one that like it, it, it took some, some messing around with. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like an easy process. It wasn't something that flowed right away. We kind of went through James, you and Kev went through different versions and stuff. Yeah. Kev and I had like Kevin, our keyboard player and I had like this really big night in the middle of summer. Like I just graduated high school reflecting on like big transition in life. Right. Like Mm -hmm. you have, you have all, all this stuff, like you're so concrete and you think you're on top of the world and you're so excited to go do these new things. And then that two week mark hits before you leave and you're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Like mm-hmm. you have all your friends from back home and you're like sitting there and you're reflecting with one of your brothers and you're like, dude, like who are going to be the people in my life forever. Right. Mm-hmm. And that kind of mindset is where that, writing comes from like it isn't just like like yes it's also like yeah this sounds so cool but like if it has that extra oomph to it i'm like yeah like this is it like fucking we got something here yeah for sure and it was mm-hmm. probably just six like six hours back and forth talking like oh this is going to be so weird like you're not going to be 10 minutes away from me you're going to be far away now like mm-hmm. what's our relationship going to look like Mm-hmm. And it's not like we're intentionally writing. We're just sitting there shooting the shit. And all of a sudden we're like, I think we got it yeah. just from talking. I like that. And then we, br- and I remember, we brought it to the band. Yeah. I remember him showing me because that, that, that original intro riff is something that, you know, if, for like, just as a disclosure, like James has a vault of guitar riffs on his phone that is, not shy of probably thousands of riffs. Oh, kid, good God. The kid, the kid just spews out amazing riffs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he has them all in his voice memos. And I remember he would send me a lot of them. We'd be like, oh, this could be cool to work on. He, and that was one that I loved. That dun, 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 dun. And I was like, all right, we really have to do something with that. And then I remember he came, but we were just stuck. We just had the riff. We didn't really know what to do. And then he came with that extra section that he wrote with Kev. And we were, that's when we realized, okay, this is finally starting to, to congeal and gel into a real song, into a real track. And then the lyrics came and, and then, yeah, the rest, the rest was history. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so I want you two to tell us your favorite lyric off this track and the meaning behind it. Oh, Oh, Gosh, that's tough because I, I oh. like a lot of, I like a lot of lyrics from this specific track. Like mm-hmm. I said, like, this is my favorite one. Yeah. James, do you have one? Oh, I'm pulling the lyrics up. Dude. I, I <laughs> yeah. have these somewhere. Yeah, I do. Come on. Where is it? All right. You know what? I'm just going to paraphrase because I, I'm not going to dig through my phone yeah. right now. <laughs> the, the, I don't know what about the comment about having white hair. and I was going to say that, that too. And that hits home. Cause I've got that white hair. In my so head. do I. That's why that's <laughs> yeah. where the lyric came from. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think that we we wrote because like I knew that about you, and I think like you knew that about me too, and like that's where yeah. that lyrical idea came from. Because I actually do, and you actually do too. It it works so well. That, I think the that's lyric, the one. The lyric that he's talking about is, uh, you know, uh, you got some gray that's showing in your hair, and mine is white as snow, but you don't care. Mm-hmm. And it's like just implying like, yeah, you're you you may be stressed and like you talking about how you feel stressed and I hear you, but you have no idea what I'm feeling. Even like even though it's so evident, you're just like ignoring that. Like that's kind of the the idea behind that line. Um, and that's that's one that I really like. That's yeah. one that hits home, dude. Every yeah. time. Yeah. Every time. Mm-hmm. It's a really good lyric. I love that. Uh, so, can you tell us where your headspace was at while you guys were writing this track? It was, it was, it was emotional. Like it's, you know, we had to dig deep to to write some of these lyrics. And like I kind of said, like some of our writing, like it's all every writing is personal, of course, to mm-hmm. to some degree. But this one felt extra personal specifically from like my experiences but i also know that me and james were going through some difficult relationship stuff at that time and 
I just think that that's why it worked so well when we were writing because we were all like really felt on the same page and you know we all it just it just it just worked I don't know it just it's tough to describe something like that that just it just happens like the like I said like the song structure was something that we had to hash out but the mm -hmm. writing was pretty natural like from a lyrical standpoint um I don't know it's it was yeah it was emotional though for sure like trying to you know think about some stuff that that was happening and trying to process that and put it into words but definitely i don't know what about you james i you said it beautifully and i kind of alluded <laughs> it to it earlier when i said like big transition period and yeah figuring out who the people in your life are that are important and boiling mm -hmm. down that feeling and really mm -hmm. putting your all into something like that right yeah. yeah i think that's the that's what i love about some of the music that we do you know like that's why i love our record it's like like yeah we had our ep where you've got like high school youth it's all fun and then this stuff it's it's definitely more analytical and it follows a very certain narrative and you cut like it's not very apparent at first but I don't know the more i sat with it and the more i listened to it i was like well shit i can remember every single time we wrote these songs and exactly what was going on yeah and yeah like that's like i hold on to that so like closely you know yeah. and this is one of those songs that's just like it was am i gonna break down while listening to this in the car or am i gonna yeah. just not bob my head and keep going right i don't mm -hmm. know it's one great. thing I'll one thing I will add though is that I I also love I love the outro of the song because it kind of symbolizes or at least to me it makes me feel like like brighter things are ahead like it's it's a solemn song and it's it's emotional but like that sort of outro it just feels and brings like more of a lighter side to the ending and just it just for me it kind of you know symbolizes like there's hope I don't know <laughs> but Getting I love the weight off the shoulders. That yeah it's like yeah. all right this won't last forever the pain or whatever yeah yeah oh yeah that. Oh, yeah. Well, that's so much but, so how do you guys recommend your fans to listen to this track for the first time should they play it in the car with friends in the dark with headphones on should they blast at a party work out to it what do you guys personally recommend i don't want to tell anyone what i would ah. do but <laughs> no but if if i had to um yeah i would definitely say dark room crying rain <laughs> led <Sorry>. lights <laughs> oh, vibe. so the james vibe <laughs> yeah, james yeah, vibe. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no but if you want to if you want to listen to it while you're pumping iron in the gym or at the party mm -hmm. by all means i i, I support that <laughs> yeah as long as you're listening to it exactly um, exactly so this question should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this single for new listeners in three words no more no less both of you have to do it all right. James, you want to go first? Yes. I would say. Oh, my goodness. All right. I would say. Moody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that it's self-reflect self-reflective one word or is that too hyphen it hyphen yeah hyphen it hyphen, hyphen it, it. Yeah. like that's that. a good one that's a, a lot really of self-reflection and i would say that it's heavy like i think that's my top three right there there oh. you go and now yeah, steven those, has those to come up with some better <laughs> ones i'm trying to i'm trying to think right now i have one for sure um it's quick I'll top your okay, head, come on. I don't Let's think go. too hard. All right, I'll, I'll give you one at least that I that I know for sure. Vulnerable okay. is one that I would describe. And like someone asked me recently, like how they would describe like the new stuff, and I said vulnerable. But this song mm -hmm. specifically is feels very vulnerable, and you know, it's not. It's yeah, like I said, it's 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 emotional, and it's it's emotional. It's it's vulnerable, and it's. Yeah, I don't know. I love self-reflective, like James said. I'm gonna take that from him, and I'll use that. <laughs> we'll let it. We'll let it slide. Exactly. We'll let it slide. Time. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> but, so, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want your listeners to have while going through this track? You know, I, I think 
you know, kind of everyone can kind of um, probably relate to it to some extent if they've been through some sort of, you know, relationship that has, that, you know, has been, has caused turmoil or something like that. Um, like I kind of described it, like from my stand, like from my standpoint and James's standpoint, um, you know, it's, I don't know. I'm getting lost now. James, save me. <laughs> I thought you were going strong. Yeah, you're just doing like, great. basically think- like anyone who's been in a relationship like that, who, 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 who may need the courage to speak their mind about like what they feel they want or they need in a relationship, you know, um, that's just one way to look at it. There's so many different ways, like people who have listened to this song, I, I think I love it because it's resonating in many different ways that I couldn't even imagine, have imagined it could, it was resonating with people. Um, but I love that, you know, so, but yeah, that's just, that's just what I would say. That was a good answer. Mm-hmm. That Thanks, was. bro. Uh, so what band or artist influence do you can hear the most on this track, if any? Oh my goodness, it's Foo Fighters, Echo, Silent Patient, and Grace. Yeah, 100%. yeah, that's I, the I would biggest say so. one. I know you can really hear, you can really hear like Emmett's sort of like like our bass player Emmett's uh, sort of like Radiohead influence on that little bass tag that he does at the end. Mm-hmm. I don't know, that feels like kind of Radiohead esque to me, and he's he's loves them and i think you can really hear that bleed through um and i'm trying to think it's it's funny because when people say like describe your music we usually have like set bands but this because this song is such an outlier mm-hmm. um i mean it still feels cohesive with the rest of the album but like just it was just different from what we the heavier stuff that we made so mm-hmm. um but yeah james said echo sounds patience and grace the foo fighters album that's definitely a good comparison we both adore that album. So, and it has an amazing mix of rock and a co- beautiful acoustic and emotional stuff. So, yeah. I just think of that song Statues on that record. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. There yeah. it is. Statues, yep. Statues by Foo Fighters. That's definitely, that's one of my favorites for sure. Hell yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Oh, oh, that's, that's tough man dude um, you're you're just full of shit that's that's so easy for, for you or for me that's such an easy choice all right what are you taking what are you taking dude i how many choices do i have like one or two like do i get a i'm guessing one and? right no you gotta get one thing man you gotta get one we'll let you we'll let you wash it down yeah, Like if you're getting something right, right. salty, you can't just leave there without a drink, man. You'll be dying. Dude, I'm, exactly. I'm That's getting true. True. at least I'm going to get like almonds or something, maybe mm-hmm. some trail mix if I want some sugar in my blood and then Banger. and then almonds, maybe a bro. water. There you go. Maybe a water. All right. All right. You're you're boring. Uh, I'm getting candy. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bounce yeah. off the walls of the van. <laughs> to be honest, though, I probably will get like sour patch watermelon or something like that yeah, i know that that's not gonna fill me up but if i want like a little snack and like a candy like so i want something sweet i'm mm-hmm. going for sour patch watermelon and i might go for a water also to be honest because you gotta stay hydrated out there when we're playing gigs we usually go through gallons so <laughs> you got a problem with that man <laughs> yeah i drink a lot of water before shows and then it usually results in me having to run to the bathroom right after the show but you know it's a good yeah, problem to have do. though yeah <laughs> for, better the, that for than... the vocals you know yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so um so where do you guys see the band in the next five years oh my god great question um you know i just hope when this album comes out you know we, we can expand our our fan base because we we have a great fan base right now that's extremely loyal which i love about that um and but i would love to you know see that expand and just really show the our new fans and also our older fans like how like how much potential we have and like how much else we can do because this record really musically like is an expansion from the first ep 
and um, it really shows like just more of a attention to detail and introspective side of us. And I, I'm excited for people to hear what else you know we have in store because we're constantly evolving as a band. I, I'd say so. But yeah, I'm just excited to expand the fan base. Hell yeah! Sure. I just want to be on a in a van. Uh, yeah, that's with true. a with a bag of romaine lettuce, some mm. like a carrot and some dressing, and bouncing bag place salads. to place. Is bag salads, exactly. Yep, <laughs> you know it. Okay, and style. just do that. And right now, the what it's looking like is we're gonna have this record out, and we're gonna have some dates lined up for the summer across, mm. which is nice. It's definitely a lot of work being independent and you're doing it all yourself while fumbling everything else that comes with being a student and also having this double life of living music, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. sure. It's hectic. tough, yeah, for sure. But, but yeah. But yeah. We're definitely excited like to shit like... in the van. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're definitely okay. excited, like, in, in, in terms of, uh, short term like we're like james was saying like we're definitely excited to play like more like kind of down the east coast and, and stuff like that and like play a lot of shows coming up this summer like when the album comes out so yeah yeah, yeah. sounds great excited for you guys <laughs> yeah thank you very much <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so for these last couple questions we're actually going to shift away from music if that's okay with you guys beautiful awesome, awesome. Beautiful. we're actually going to go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me this kind of recently and, and I forget what I said. Who's asking these questions? <laughs> Someone who's or, or, not, when not I say a lot recently, to talk about. When I say recently, I mean like it was probably like a year ago, but I, time okay. is not <laughs> at this point now. So yeah. um, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I mean, orange soda is like, I don't drink it a ton, but like, I, that's like probably my favorite drink. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I love orange soda and like, it's my last meal. Like, screw it. I'm going to have a giant thing of orange soda. Exactly. And oh. probably like a big, like chicken parm or something <laughs> like from like a really nice, there's a chicken parm I had when we went to New York, uh, like when the band went to New York a couple years ago, I had an amazing chicken parm at this at this uh, restaurant in, what was it like, uh, like the little Italy section of the city they have? I forget, mm -hmm. but it was amazing, and I would literally have that as my last meal. Okay, perfect. All right, I don't have a drink preference. I'd probably just have a water, and oh then my, my mom's home cooker, which is great. Your or... mom is an amazing cook. Yep, that is true. And then maybe if I can't have that, then I'm just going to have a pizza and call it a day. Doesn't matter where. Fair just enough. get it. All Enjoy right. it. Solid. Uh, Solid. So if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Easy. In the Star Wars universe. There you go. Easy. <laughs> Easy. That sound, sounds a little chaotic, bro. You have to keep your wits about you, I feel like. So many battles. Dude, I feel like, dude yeah. I would kick ass. <laughs> so there you go yeah just whip out your lightsaber you're good um <laughs> oh god this is tough i prop uh ah damn this is a good question Dude, you'd live in the mcu come on man the mcu would be really cool to live in for sure except you'd live james. in fear of being disintegrated every five seconds. yeah oh, that's true true yeah. yeah me and james are, are both uh big mcu nerds so I would, I would, yeah, I'd probably take that. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Who are uh, your favorite uh, Avengers, by the way? Oh, God, that's, that's such a, I mean, I love Thor, of course, you know, okay. I love the whole, I love the big three. I love each one of them for different reasons. Cap, okay. Iron Man, and Thor, they're, they ju just hold, hold a special place in my heart for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deaf. I like Thor 100% and I love RDJ, but liking RDJ is like, all right, we get it. You like vanilla <laughs> ice cream? <laughs> Come on, no! <laughs> I'm offended. I'm I'm personally offended. I don't. I did not like that I'm, answer. I'm not. I'm not dissing RDJ. It's just vanilla. 
I mean, it, it's like you're supposed to love them. Oh, they made good. Thor so cool in like the last few films, and I just I adore it. That's fair. Me too. Me too. I respect it. So I picked my favorite one. It's Thor out of the big three. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. I actually have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person you've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. Oh, no. What is your favorite color? Ooh. Mm. I'd have to Hello. go. I- Really? Blue. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I didn't I didn't know that about you. Hmm. Has it always been blue? Yeah. Wow. I have blue guitar picks, a blue guitar. That's I have true. blue eyes. That's true. There you go. You do have a lot of blue things. Um yeah. this like changes a lot for me, but ever since the band started, pretty much, I would have to say that red is my favorite color. I mean, huh? that's like a huge theme of the of the band color, but I mean, I, I really like was wearing my red bands, like, and most of my school things are in front of me are red. That's the go-to color that I go to when I want to buy stuff. I don't know. I just love it. Fair I'd enough. have to say red. I'd have All to right. say red. It's a based color. Uh, <laughs> so as Gloria said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Um, we have a bunch of songs out right now. If you want to check them out, that's great. If you don't, that's also okay. <laughs> we like making music. And if you like finding music that's not your typical like mainstream stuff and like goofy guys who like to talk about Marvel and shit, like, come check us out. Hell yeah. I, mean, I don't Dolly. know. Dolly and My Regards are out now. Go listen to those on every We got other platform. songs too, but we like these yes. ones. These are the yeah. new guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow all the social media stuff. You know, we're on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and stuff. So. Yeah, and Steven is low-key a TikTok celebrity now. Oh, God, I wouldn't <laughs> say TikTok celebrity. But, uh... <laughs> on the TikTok grind, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's thank fun. you. <laughs> thank, you guys. thank you guys Thanks so much. That was, that was a blast. Of course. Thank you for sound. This guy's been Roll Over White, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.